everybody! Happy Saturday! Welcome to Talk O'Clock! It's time to review the week! Can't believe it's already passed. Um, I do have the feeling that every week just goes by even faster than the one before. But I uh, did do prep and plan and uh, design a lot of things and um, I guess when you're working so much you just forget time. Anyways, um, let's start with what I published before I uh, show you a few things and talk about a few things that I didn't put on video. So here's the first thing. Monday is Art Journal Day and uh, this one is the August, yeah, August prompt. Uh, windows and doors of the journal workshops and I made this tiny fella here with a, a lot of Tombow markers, permanent markers, and a few colored pencils, and I really liked it. Um, this was also one of the pieces that I made a few weeks ago once I started catching up. So I'm finally getting to the end of all the artwork that I produced in that phase, and I really, really liked it. Now, if you want to know more details, especially about the taco challenge and the art journal. I do have narrations on the video, so just hop on to the videos there in the iCards or also in the playlists, you can find them there on the channel. Uh, if you're just interested in what kind of materials I used, uh, I do have them on my blog for every Tiny Tuesday and Taco Challenge painting. And for the Friday videos, I do have a full story of background information, where inspiration hit me, why I made a painting, whatnot. So if you're curious, either check out the um, the YouTube videos or my blog. You can find information in uh, both locations for different uh, projects there. So again, this was Monday, liked it and liked uh, the the interactive part, like opening the door and whatnot. Um, Tuesday was Tiny Tuesday day and I made this one or published this one. Now it seems that I do have a lot of different kinds of flowers in the Tiny Tuesdays lately. It just hit me when I uploaded photos uh, to my blog that's like flowers again. Okay, what's going on there? I don't know what's going on. I just seem to like doing something with a flower theme. So this was a very simple one and I really like the black and white with just one color. Uh, in this case, red. And uh, I like it. it it's quite clean and neat, though the line work here is not accurate because this was made with a stencil. But uh, other than that, it's just, yeah, it's just a, a neat tiny thing that was done really fast, I just remembered. Um, anyways, so let's hop to the talker challenge. Now this one is really difficult for me. I'm not sure if I like it or not. I like parts of it. I don't like other parts of it at all. Uh, it's this one here. It's called Sentential. And uh, I'm... I will probably redo it at one point or make a, make a new one with other media because the longer it's here in my studio and I've been painting it, I think it was two weeks ago, um, the longer it sits here and uh, the longer I look at it, I always find things that I don't like, which is not good, but it's fine. Um, I wasn't 100% happy with the painting once I finished it. You can see that in the video that I'm really not sure, but um, it's, it's okay because usually these kinds of paintings, and that's actually why I published it, and just did not delete it and made a new one. But uh, these paintings are usually the step between having an idea, trying it out and then figuring out what wasn't that great and then redo it and then it's awesome, usually. So uh, I published it because I want you to know that even people that are painters or artists for a long, long time, or even people who do that as a business, do have these stages when it comes to doing artwork. Once in a while it's just like, meh, no. 
quite often sometimes even. So that's why I published it anyway, is because uh, it might be that I redo it in the near future and not like years from now. And then I have it on my channel and then I probably will say something about that in the story uh, that I write on my blog. So um, that's why I decided to put the not so pretty kind of painting where I'm not sure uh, in on, on the channel as well. Now, the total opposite of the sentential painting is the one on Friday. Um, I usually make deco art only when I'm uh, commissioned to do it or really once in a while if I just feel like it. That's not my main focus or the main draw when it comes to what I want to paint or what I do like to do. But uh, once in a while it hits me and I do want to make an art deco piece and I made this one quite recently. It's called Paw Piece and uh, it's made with different kinds of wood, uh, spray paint and acrylic paint and uh, I really like the outcome. Um, I, I usually don't work on these uh, huge surfaces of wood. Um, I usually only have DIN A4, I think that's what's down there, I think it's DIN A4. But uh, we very recently um, bought quite a bit of wood because uh, we needed different kinds of uh, pieces of wood for our laser cutter and uh, I said, well, give me, give me some, give me maybe like five pieces and I want to try artwork on them in on bigger scale and uh, the first one is like I said this one here and I really like the outcome uh, what I like most about it is that the usual colors are reversed so usually you'd have the poppies be red and the background be black and white maybe but uh, I liked uh, the way it looks when you flip that and have the um, the poppies be monochrome and the background be really colorful. So yeah, like this one. Um, then I, like I said before, uh, earlier in the video, that's what you actually say, um, I did other things too. So I, I, I think I, yeah, I did talk about that last week in the talk o'clock uh, that I'm uh, trying to get back to the uh, DLPs, which is Documented Life Projects, that I haven't done for my calendar and uh, that I'm finally now catching up. And that last week I was stuck on the first uh, challenge and prompt and I was really frustrated because I knew that once I, once I uh, made it, I would be really happy with uh, doing more of the pieces and you know sometimes I'm just really right and I made documented life projects yay and now I'm stuck at a new one and I hope next week I will be unstuck and have some more uh, pages for you to show so uh, let me let me see uh, I didn't uh, put them on uh, the website yet so uh, there you officially see them here first I didn't even, I was so in my mind while creating them and so occupied with different kinds of thoughts that I even forgot to Instagram the uh, work in progress on most of them. I think I did one, but that's all. It's like, oops. Anyways, um, I'm going to get better again next week, probably. I'm going to have a big post-it or something here if I do get distracted again. But uh, enough of the ramble, this is the first one. That was week 22, Touchy Feely. Uh, textured paper and the prompt was, I'm so not feeling it. And uh, if you saw last week, you you heard me, at the talk o'clock last week, you heard me say that I had bits and pieces in my mind, but uh, other things were missing. So I did have the white texture paper with the ink and the uh, markers, that was fine. But this strip here and the background here, I was not sure what to do there. So uh, that only came to me this week. 
So it's uh, washi tape and um, pieces of doilies and, like I said, the uh, textured paper. So then it was uh, June, which was travel journaling. The challenge was illustrated art journaling and the prompt take me away. So I usually take either the challenge or the prompt and sometimes I do take both. I think with this one I went more with the prompt take me away, week 23. And this one came to me quite, quite uh, easily, maybe. Uh, well, at least the painting part. So I just had to figure out how to frame it to make it DIN A4. But um, I kind of knew like super, super quickly what I wanted to do. Now the travel journaling is, you think, going on vacation, all of that. But actually I took it a bit differently. So that week was uh, the week that um, we took my dad to a hospital um, and he never came home. So most of you who's, who, who've, been, who've been with me for a while now, you heard that uh, in June my dad passed away. And that was actually the week um, that Saturday that we took him to a hospital and uh, well he was going on his own journey so that's pretty much what's in here it's not so much about vacation and like that and things like that so June was kind of difficult because it just hit home with the, with the prompts and everything but um, it wasn't difficult to make something with it if you know what I mean. So, for example, uh, week 24, uh, same travel journaling, uh, it says uh, the challenge recording memories and the prompt take me, uh, taking the road less traveled. So I didn't regard or didn't use the prompt here, I just took the challenge recording memories and I made this one here. And uh, the day that prompt week 24 came out that's actually the day that my dad passed away so I made it uh, with uh, him recording memories so what I did here is uh, I searched through different kinds of photos that I have so him as a kid as a young adult and these two are were taking at my wedding uh, the father daughter dance and uh, him with his brother who also passed away this year from a very similar disease and uh, that's just the the theme here the memories that they recorded that that they made uh, and that well we made with them for most of the time i wasn't with my dad when he was a kid but you know what i mean and uh with um the use of different kinds of uh, media like acrylics up here spray paints down here and just a bit of paper. I mean, I tried to make it like a haze, so uh, it's it's pretty much the realization of yeah, these are the memories, but I made them. And that's all that they are, and now I'm I have to move on or something from my dad's perspective, and well, from my perspective, just to pretty much honor him and have tribute to him, so. That's why this is the piece. And it seems that um, that very recent history hits me way more with the documented life projects. Well, because they're weekly, of course, you document your life, uh, than they do with um, other paintings. So I do have different kinds of um, tendencies when I do other paintings, like what I want to do, what I feel comfortable with, with which colors, which mediums that I just crave and others that I don't at all. But it's not so much the topic of my dad passing it away. It's more like I'm in that and that mood. But with the documented lives, it's way more uh, that he's present with what I depict or what I, what I uh, choose as a subject, how I incorporate that recent history into artwork visibly not just with me being in a mood you know so where are we with 25 um that one was a funny one funny in in the sense of being totally weird 
Uh, week 25 was the challenge hometown inspiration and the prompt there is no place like home. Now here's a confession and you probably are going to uh, shake your head or laugh or whatever, but I've never seen Wizard of Oz. Um, I didn't know that uh, the sentence there is no place like home came from that until uh, I read it in another book and uh, I had a seminar about that book very recently and uh, hey going with a hype haha no I've been reading those books for ages uh, it's actually the Outlander series and in that book um, the main character says that sentence there is no place like home as well and with the seminars with uh, some uh, very cool podcasters I actually discovered the whole thing of Wizard of Oz so I didn't go with the prompt at all that week that's why I told you that crazy thing um, to actually say I didn't go with the prompt but I did go with the challenge home challenge it's uh, hometown inspiration now uh, here's a weird thing about me uh, which made this challenge kind of difficult for me or, the, or that, that week. Um, I don't associate the word home with a, diff uh, with, a, with a specific place or house or city, town, thing, uh, not even a time period, nothing. That's not what I associate with home. This might sound arrogant and so pretentious, but it's true, so... Hmm. Um, I consider home me, because for my soul, for my emotions, for, for me, this body is home, because I live in it, so... Um, I, I didn't want to... <laughs> I didn't want to uh, paint myself as a map of houses, like hometown, you know, uh, a home inspiration um, might have been a totally different kind of kind of a painting there, but hometown, that's where I kind of struggled with, where I was like, uh, it was more like, um, what the heck am I going to paint? Oh, it's like, uh, empty, no idea. So I decided to go at this logically which was, uh, which city did I spend my formative years in? And uh, what's cool, different uh, about that city? So my formative years, which was one to nine and a half, that's what I think is, well, you're a kid, you're learning, uh, you're pre-pubescent, and uh, these are what I call or what I think are the formative years. Uh, so I spent those in a very lovely city called Chemnitz, which is in Eastern Germany. And uh, that city had uh, a fossilized forest. So like stone forest in front of the city theater. So I decided, well, that's cool. Maybe just draw or paint that. So ta-da, here it is. And I really liked uh, this, this very simple piece. Um, it's been forever that I made these very simple paintings or drawings with only charcoal. I made a lot of them with pastels, but before that I used charcoal. So it's been forever and I think... Uh, four months that I didn't even use charcoal between making this and uh, the past. So four months not using charcoal at all and more like two decades that I switched from mainly these kinds of paintings or drawings to exploring other things and um, just broadening, broadening the spectrum there. Um, and using other materials or other media for a different kind of thing that I wanted to express. So these are very, my charcoal paintings always are very moody, very mel melancholic. It just comes with the medium. So I automatically set, I'm set in this part where it's, it's quite 
well reminiscent like i said it's moody so i was surprised how quickly that turned uh, to be a drawing for the week and uh, how much i liked it actually uh so i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with it like not with this piece but with the uh resurfaced craving of um doing these kinds of drawings and paintings well i know what i'm gonna do about that uh, but in another sense i don't know so i did have a large art supply delivery this week and last week um so i know what i'm gonna do about it i'm just i'm just gonna give in and make things but since they're always really melancholic and moody and kind of dark i don't want to say mysterious but they're they're not light and uplifting and bouncy they're more serene kind of drawings i don't know where this leads me in comparison to other very bouncy things very goofy things that i do if they counteract each other if i just um I don't know, Mondays I do the goofy things and Tuesdays I make the melancholic things. It's like, huh? I don't know where this leads me, but I know that I'm craving um, this kind of uh, drawing again. So I'm just going to give in. I, I, uh, I learned long, long, long ago to not uh, push back and just go the colorful and easy way when uh something needs to be said well maybe not for the public but for me it needs to be it needs to get out so i learned long long ago not to ignore that but I'm, i was just very surprised when when this happened um another thing and that's actually the last uh documented life that i did so far before i got stuck again on july uh, the last June was, uh, the challenge was photos and words and the prompt, a picture is more than a thousand words. So since I was so surprised with the charcoal thing, and by the way, uh, the background here is done with watercolors. It's not done with pastel chalks, as you might think there, it's watercolor. But I thought, wow, uh, it's been forever. It's been, I think it was, it's two decades now. No, is it? Yeah, it's two decades. Gosh, I'm old. <laughs> it's two decades that I mainly uh, drew or painted with uh, pastel chalks and uh, charcoal. So I thought, well, I'm gonna do that again. That's that's fun, you know. I I really liked it. So I made this one here for the week twenty six. And uh, I only incorporated, um, well, it's pretty much the, the challenge. It's not really the prompt with a picture is more than a thousand words, but again, it kind of is. Uh, but the challenge was uh, photos and words. So I, cho I chose um, a, a, a part of a photo that I took from the town that I lived in after my formative years, uh, throughout the teenager years, uh, pretty much, and uh, added some words down here just to meet the challenge, but it actually also fits with the tree here. So that week, uh, my mom bought the tree where we would bury my dad. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with the concept, but there is the way to bury somebody at a tree in a forest. No mas no fuss, you know? And we bought a nice tree. We uh, did that that week, or we decided on which one uh, we all liked best. My mom, my brother, my hubby and I. And then my mom decided which one she, she would buy. And uh, it's... Uh, yeah, it, it's a really lovely tree, so that's why there's a tree in the painting here. But um, it also is very calm, very peaceful, very, very quiet. And sometimes 
I don't even have words to describe the atmosphere at that forest or at that tree. It's not eerie. It's not like uh, a feeling you might have at a traditional uh, graveyard. It's, like I said, I, I don't have words for it. It's, yeah, it's just different. Um, so the words that I used here are, I kind of sectioned them the good and the bad, kind of, not really. Um, so the good is pictures, memories, emotions. Um, the bad ones are emptiness, silence and defeat. And in the middle it's no words. Because uh, sometimes I think that any kind of language, at least any language that I know and that I speak, um, there are it's, they are all missing words for certain things. Um, you can't really describe, especially emotions. It's really difficult. And uh, maybe we should uh, invent new words to describe certain things. But um, yeah, that's why a picture sometimes is more than a thousand words because you can communicate emotions sometimes way easier with a picture or painting than you can with actual words because there are none. Um, yeah, anyways, so these were the DLPs that I did and I hope that very soon, maybe beginning of next week, I will be able to have them up uh, on the DLP page um, or maybe I just wait until I have caught up with all of them then just uh, publish them in one go. I don't know yet. But uh, I'm very happy that I finished five of them already. And now I'm stuck on the July ones, which, uh, yeah, is ephemera. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm stuck. Maybe I'm unstuck until next Saturday so I can show you a few more uh, tiny pieces there. So other than all of that, um, like I said, it was actually more of a planning, prepping kind of kind of week. For example, uh, I realized that uh, wow, it's it's uh, only mid September, but it's for crafters, painters, all of that kind of folks. Um, we do actually start with Christmas stuff. It's like ah, oh, I'm actually not in the mood, but I gotta get going. I gotta at least have a list of how many cards I need to make this year and uh, well when I when do I have to send them out latest so that they are at the recipient by 1st of December and I realized that I have to get going um, and that's my first time I'm just gonna talk over it and answer that later um, I have to get going quite quickly because uh, end of October I get a send out or early early November I get a send out cards because some of the recipients are on the other side of the world and mail sometimes takes three weeks so I want to make sure that they got them by 1st of December which is totally weird that I gotta have my Christmas stuff ready by end of October which is only four weeks pretty much so I've been uh, Compiling my list for how many cards I gotta send uh, Where on the world I gotta send them how many I can send out Quite late. So maybe end of November mid-November And how many of them I really gotta send out early to make sure that recipients uh, Receive them in time and then I uh, pretty much uh, Design created two different kinds of cards that I'm going to send out. So that was the planning kind of thing designing kind of thing for uh, the Christmas uh, Section of what I did this week and then I also worked on the design of a tattoo that I've been commissioned to do and it was more like uh, I did have three ideas of with the limitations and the uh, the specifics that I got from the customer that uh, it was more like okay what can I do with it I got three main ideas and I just played with with those to see uh, which which look nicest which I like most stuff like that so yeah did that 
and that was pretty much my week and um, I'm gonna go and see who just called and call back and uh, I hope you enjoyed this very long vlog I think um, have a very good one take good care if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below otherwise uh, hit me up on any of the social medias if you're interested Facebook or uh, my blog Twitter Instagram feel free I'm there and uh, I will see you tomorrow on the gamers couch and on Monday with a new art journal and I got a tease already this is um, my favorite September page that's coming up so stay tuned take care maybe you got some time to create all right bye bye